So, uh, we continue our discussion on uh, supply chain management and the, what we are trying to study since last class is we are trying to understand the information flow within the supply chain. And uh, in this context, we defined what a supply chain is, uh, what a supply chain is and we saw that supply chain is actually connects the value chain. It is uh, supply chain is actually the value delivery network which connects the individual uh, companies who finally, reach uh, are responsible together to uh, fulfill the demand of the customer. Then we saw that the, this um, supply chain goes through four major cycles and during this to carry out this cycle a number of activities are carried out and there is information flow while carrying out these activities. Now, let us see uh, here we saw that how what are various information that can go from the supplier to the purchaser. Now, let us see what kind of suppliers uh, what kind of information is actually shared between supply chain partners and what information sharing can do. Look when we discussed uh, discussed about the supply chain we saw that order information goes from down the supply chain from customer till the uh, I mean it, it goes to uh, the upstream and then the delivery information actually goes downstream. Now, this order information is very crucial for the firm to decide its production, uh, decide how to produce and how much to produce. So, for this purpose the information sharing uh, if it is done within the supply chain it can actually reduce the variability in the supply chain. It uh, because the product information is shared from the downstream members the suppliers make uh, can make better forecasts, they can account for promotions or market changes, they can uh, uh, this information sharing can enable the coordination of manufacturing and distribution systems and strategies. This can enable retailers to better serve the customers by offering tools for locating desired items. This can enable the ret retailers to react and adapt to supply problems more rapidly and this can enable lead time reduction. And uh, this because of this variability in the supply chain one important phenomena called bullwhip effect can happen. Now, see this variability in the supply chain which is about the uncertainty in the demand pattern that is becomes more and more prominent as you go from your downstream member to the upstream members look here it shows the variability in the quantity order to the upstream members. Now, though there are many reasons for this variability like demand forecasting, uncertainty in the lead time, batch ordering and so on the lack of centralized information have been carried out have been characterized as one of the important um, important reason one of the major reason for variability in the supply chain. So, this what this variability in the supply chain does as I told you this is called bullwhip effect and this bull because of this bullwhip effect there is because uh, there, there is uncertainty about how what will be the customers demand and how much to produce there is increase in safety stock level, there is reduction in service level and there is inefficient allocation of resources all these things are because of the uncertainty demand uncertainty and accordingly there is increase in the transportation cost. Now, this e supply chain 
is about facilitating real time updates across the supply chain from consumer to the supplier from downstream to upstream and it provides the greater ability to fill orders and better understand the customer needs. Now, this supply chain uh, information sharing can happen in two different ways. First, it can be inter, inter enterprise, it can be connection between inter enterprise systems. Let us say ERP system of, let us say this is the ERP system of the manufacturing corporation and you can get the demand data. We are concerned about getting the demand data from this way and providing the, I mean the order detail from this way and uh, your uh, actual items will be the will be moving from the upstream to the downstream. So, from retail store it can come to retail chain, um, um, then from to the I mean the to the distribution uh, uh, centers, then it can come to the uh, manufacturer, then manufacturer accordingly asks the raw material from the supplier and so on. So, in this process the ERP system of the individual entities can share information. This is one way of getting the information shared. The second way, however, here uh, one this uh, um, uh, the, the uh, retailer, retailer can actually connect with just its immediate upstream members, but in case you like to share this data among all the entities in the supply chain, you may need a centralized SCM solution in which you will have a centralized database to which individually everybody will be connecting. So, it will be a uh, different system which will help individual members to connect, it is a centralized system centralized database. So, what are various objectives and outcomes uh, which can be accomplished with this inter, -inter, uh, inter enterprise supply chain information system. So, uh, uh, in fact, in fact I would like to tell you here Connecting between two ERP system can have many um, strategic level as well as technical uh, strategic uh, operational level strategic level operational level as well as technical level problems, but the mutual agree agreement between two organizations is quite possible and in this centralized system everybody has to agree and everybody's information system has to be um, compatible with this centralized system for sharing information. But in case it is between mutual agreement of two immediate entities in the supply chain, then there are various objectives which can be achieved and uh, let us uh, we are going to see what are those objectives and what are various outcomes. So, first activity is the strat uh, is str uh, uh, it is strategic in nature. So, what are the objective is here? The objective is to establish what is the purpose, here objective we are telling so many times, objective what is the purpose of this supply chain integration and what are various policies and what kind of operating uh, <coughs> level procedures you would like to have um, after this strategic activities. So, here um, the outcomes are the objective of uh, connecting the members, then deciding about supply policies and your service levels, then your network design. Then in the next tactical level, the objectives which are set by the strategic level has to be now realized. Here various activities are deploying resources to match the supply to demand, which uh, has the outcome as demand forecast, 
production, procurement and logistics plan and inventory target. Then next is your operational activity. In this operational activity, the objective is to deploy resources to match supply and demand and work center scheduling, order and inventory tracking. Then the first last one is your execution level where you decide to build uh, the product and transport it. Here the outcome is to maintain the order cycle and have material movement. So, the various functional processes under the supply chain are strategic sourcing and procurement, forecasting and demand plan, forecast and demand planning, customer order fulfillment and service, distribution network and warehouse operations, transportation and shipment management and production logistics. In a typical supply chain management system, your ERP system will be taking care of the order entry, the manufacturing system, um, planning system and shipping system. Uh, it will have these components for which you, you have to connect to two additional systems and these two are your transaction, uh, transportation management system and your warehouse management system and uh, through uh, though your ERP system is um, uh, ERP system has the components for order entry manufacturing uh, this thing uh, manufacturing planning system and shipping system, but actually these are the interfaces through which you receive the data from the external uh, TMS and WMS systems. So, from your ordering system you get order and shipping notifications and those details are going to your warehouse uh, management system which uh, gives the corresponding detail to your distribution system and it sends you the shipment plan. Then this shipment plan is sent uh, sh shipment plan along with the orders is sent to your transaction manage management si uh, transportation management system which in turn actually connects with your freight carriers. <coughs> so, in the typical B 2 B supply chain process not only the purchaser and the, the buyer and the supplier are involved and information flow between them there are other another entity uh, which is responsible uh, which has to be there in order to automate the full process and that entity is the bank. You can have both purchaser bank and you can have the suppliers bank. In fact, uh, in a, a typical electronic data interchange that is EDI information flow after the payment authorization is made by the purchaser, then the payment from the author after it, it your purchaser's bank gets the payment authorization, it sends the remittance notice to the purchaser as well as it gives the appropriate notice for electronic funds transfer to the supplier's bank and supplier the fund electronically gets transferred and finally, the payment uh, details are sent to the supplier. So, in this uh, particular environment as I have uh, we have already discussed in the earlier class um, in a supply chain network not only the information flow three things flow one is information, second is material, third is money. In fact, if you look here we are showing the information part for example, look at look, look at this, you are getting the uh, advance shipping notice from the supplier. Shipping actually plays and the physical transportation of the good takes place in the channel, but at the same time the uh, information part of it that is the notice which comes to the purchaser. So, and similarly for money, the invoice gets generated here and sent to the purchaser and payment advice uh, I mean releasing the payment advice to the bank that detail is sent to the supplier 
funds actually gets transferred, but the corresponding information flow also happen. So, as we discussed earlier in a supply chain not only the uh, not only the uh, information uh, not only the uh, I mean the information um, information flows about the material and money as well. Now, what are various challenges of e supply chain? First of all planning and select planning selection and implementation of a supply chain management solution. Now, what exactly is the uh, idea behind this planning selection and implementation of a supply chain uh, management system? As I was telling showing you it can happen in two ways either two immediate um, entities supply chain entities they connect each other or all the entities in the supply chain they can decide to have a centralized solution. So, taking this decision about what kind of method to implement is a challenge and it you remember if it is only organization you can take its own decision, but it is multiple organizations. So, uh, they sh every member should be convinced that they are going to reap the benefit out of uh, implementation of such information sharing system. <coughs> then suppose they plan and select, but creating a real time uh, uh, supply chain management uh, supply chain in, uh, management infrastructure is still a problem. Here uh, let us try to understand what we mean by a real time supply chain management system. Look, if we have the connectivity between two immediate partners, then the information will flow between them. Therefore, uh, I mean the from a uh, lower end supply uh, uh, um, downstream member it will come to the manufacturer then it will go to the upstream member. In between there will be information delay. By real time SCM infrastructure we mean we have to have a we have to have some infrastructure where there will be immediate capture of the information by any member of the chain which others can actually visualize at the same time. So, such kind of centralized infrastructure where without any delay the every entity will be updated about the changes happening in the supply chain is difficult. Then even if two members decide to connect their information system, the technological differences that exist between both their individual enterprise systems has to be first resolved in order to connect them. Now, technology advances so fast that if one of the company's ERP system is little uh, older, then the technologies for uh, for resolving the uh, for resolving the technological issues, uh, technological in incompatibility issues between both the systems become very expensive. Then, suppose with one of your supply chain member somehow you resolve the technological incompatibility issues. Now, if you have multiple supply chain members along with along uh, I mean the individually with each you have to now carry out the same process it is even more expensive. Then in case a new supply chain partner comes in then making him adopt your technologies for sharing is also 
problematic. So, implementation wise it is a problematic area uh, in case you go for I mean the if you simply talk about the supply chain integration and interoperability <coughs> and the benefits coming out of it, it is fine, but actually automating the whole process and the technological issues behind it can uh, create many hindrances for automation of the supply chain. So, now we continue with our uh, supply chain management um, activities and see what are various strategic and uh, operational activities and uh, which related to the technology can actually provide these challenges. In fact, some of these challenges we saw last class, we are see how these challenges can be alleviated. So, in this lecture, we are going to learn the integration, interoperability and collaboration within the supply chain and uh, what is the role of information sharing here. Then we are showing, going to see what are various dimensions of supply chain interoperability and the dimensions of supply chain collaboration. Then we are going to talk about the models for collaboration. So, what exactly is this supply chain integration? The supply chain integration is the extent to which the firms can strategically collaborate with their supply chain partners and collaboratively manage the intra and inter organizational processes to achieve effective and efficient flow of product and services, information, money and decisions with the objectives of providing the maximum value to the customer at low cost and high speed. So, the supply chain integration is about the strategic collaboration. Now, the supply chain integration has two aspects. First, interoperability which is about dealing with the technical issues of information integration. Then second one is your collaboration which deals with the managerial issues and it has many different aspects. For example, your collaboration can have through collaborative communication, the collaboration can have through some, some kind of contracting, uh, uh, it is a strategic level activity. Then uh, it, you, it, this collaboration can have through appropriate information sharing, through joint decision making, by joint knowledge creation and resource sharing. So, what we have understood is that supply chain integration is an strategic activity and it has two aspects. One is the uh, how strategically it has to be achieved through collaboration and it has one technical aspect which is called interoperability. Now, what exactly is supply chain interoperability? Supply chain interoperability is the ability of in fact, we will be first talking about what interoperability is. It need not be only in the context of supply chain, it is about between any two heterogeneous systems. Uh, the interoperability is the ability of two or more systems or components to exchange and use the information that has been exchanged. This interoperable systems require both technical and semantic level operability. Now, what exactly is this technical operability? This technical interoperability deals with the hardware and software compatibility. In fact, when we will be talking about the technologies on supply, of, on supply chain integration, we will be talking more on this how to resolve this, I mean the what are various approaches for resolving this uh, technical interoperability. Then uh, next is your semantic interoperability. The semantic interoperability 
ensures that both the systems have same understanding of different concepts. For example, when the product information flow, you uh, um, let us say in the advanced shipping notice which is come from your downstream members to you, that advanced shipping notice actually shows you the product numbers uh, and their quantity etcetera which is coming from your uh, <coughs> downstream member. Now, getting this uh, advanced shipping notice, how do you get this advanced shipping notice? While getting this advanced shipping notice, either you will be getting it through uh, email or through uh, EDI or may be through a web service. But whatever may be the way of getting it, if it has to be uh, why you somebody has to actually uh, either somebody has to re enter the data or it has to be automatically captured by the upstream ERP system. Try to understand what I am saying. I am saying the data is coming from downstream ERP system and it has to go to the upstream ERP system. When this data goes, suppose you resolve the compatib uh, technical compatibility which exists because of this uh, hardware and software issues, you resolved it. Now, you should be able to get the data, but the meaning of the data is also important. Suppose the product A is uh, some product is has the product number let us say A 111 in your with your downstream members. Now, unless otherwise both the companies, both the members in the supply chain, um, both the partners adopt the same coding system, it is difficult to understand what product, uh, only from the product uh, code it is uh, difficult to understand what product it is. Now, suppose you say that in, along with the product code, the name of the product is sent. Now, looking at the name. In fact, one of the earlier classes we have already discussed these issues while probably talking about the e procurement. Uh, we understand that even if we actually um, send the complete name of some product, if the name is not written exactly in the same manner all the time then at least you as a human being can understand, but the computer unless otherwise it is it is explicitly mentioned to the software that all these uh, uh, all these names even if they are written in a different form either complete form, short form or in, uh, in some other way they are the same unless otherwise that knowledge goes to your uh, ERP system, he cannot understand. So, therefore, while transferring the data, this semantic interoperability of both the systems, so that they conceptually understand the underst uh, conceptually get the same meaning out of certain data is extremely important. Then, uh, supply chain interoperability is about uh, business to business integration and it is a specifically a challenging task because of many reasons. First, there are diverse information format. By diverse information format, we mean let us say you are sending the uh, exchanging the data between uh, two systems and in one of the systems it is uh, let us say oracle and other system it is the data is in some form, uh, it is in some other database let us say db2. Uh, so, that db2 data has a different metadata structure than that of your oracles uh, databases metadata structure. 
So, therefore, whenever you have to exchange because of this driver's information format, there will be problem. Then second issue comes the large and dynamic information space. By this large and dynamic information space, we mean the information, the nature of the information keep changing and because of this change, because of this change, if you have somehow resolved that uh, semantic integration issues between two types of uh, between uh, let us say for uh, you have resolved this uh, um, the issues of compatibility for sending the order information. Next time when your shipping information come, it has to uh, you have to design specific processes for making that shipping information understandable. Then next is your lack of standards for semantic integration of data. Uh, when we say, in fact we have already, I have told, told, told you already um, that what is the meaning of the semantic, uh, what is the meaning of resolving the semantic issues during data exchange. Now, if there would have been a common standard, then this exchange would have been easier, but there is lack of standard for this semantic integration. Then when the data goes from one system to the other, then it has to be security, proper security has to be maintained. So, resolving this security aspect is another problem. Then the reliable data transmission through internet is the last issue which has to be resolved to carry out the supply chain interoperability. Thank you very much. We will be continuing with uh, the same topic in the next lecture.